as much as possible. Let's do this. Ready? The code and that is some redneck ingenuity there. We don't have a truck and he's got this nice new Saab. It's literally mint inside and out and we just put an engine in the back. Uh, a 2J fits in a Saab, just barely, just barely, but it does fit. Uh, we're taking it up to IEG tomorrow. Uh, well, actually Saturday, today's Thursday. And um, yeah, so that's one way. So all the head and everything else just goes in the back of the car. So yeah, that actually wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. And it makes me kind of happy. So yeah, that's how it's gonna go up. This is quite interesting. All right, guys. Good morning. Good morning. So we are headed to well, see Tom. Who's Tom? Tom is going to be the one that's building the engine and the head for me. Uh, Tom is one of the engine builders over at IG Performance, and that's what IG does. So they build really fast, awesome Subarus, right? My buddy Colton here. Say hi, Colton. Hi. Right. He used to actually have an IG built SCI. Uh, now he has a Supra. So. Going over there, Tom works with them, and you're probably like, well, Tom does Supras, Ryan. He doesn't do Supras. Why are you using him? Well, Tom also has this. So that's Tom Supra, and it's nuts. And he built that himself too, did a great job. Um, so yeah, I'm entrusting Tom to do this for me. He's been very transparent, we've gone over everything. Um, I'll kind of go over the build with you then once we get there, but I just wanna let you know guys, we're headed there. The sun is really bad this morning. I'm gonna flip the camera around. Uh, we're in, well, now Maryland, but you can see how beautiful the sun is, and it did snow, so it's a little cold here this morning. Uh, we got about another 30 or so minutes to go, but I'll talk to you guys once we get there. Okay guys, so we're at the shop here now. Uh, Colton and Tom are actually talking, but just brought everything in. I'm just gonna have Tom go over a few things really short with you guys, uh, kind of introduce himself, and kind of show you what we're doing here today. All right guys, so we got the parts laid out, and then we've got the real master here, Tom. Tom, man, thank you again for doing this, brother. I appreciate it. Um, let's give a little rundown. Who is Tom? Because everyone's probably seen my post, I keep saying Tom, and everyone's like, what the hell, or who the hell is Tom? Who's so, this guy? Who's this guy? So go ahead and give a little you know, background on yourself. Sure, uh, my name is Tom Barbosa. I work at IG Performance, I'm an engine builder here. And uh, I've been building super engines for like 10 years or so now, but I've also done a lot of stuff in between. Um, anywhere from VQ stuff for, for uh, Nissan, uh, Subarus, kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, obviously built the engine in my car. And yeah, this is, this is the engine that we're gonna build for Ryan. So my original block that you guys know I had and been gentle with, not. Uh, it's definitely seen the ringer. And then for the head, I was able to source a brand new head, which you guys saw in some previous videos. Again, big thank you to Brian Crower for all the parts you're gonna be seeing here. Robert Delangio at Real Street got me some awesome mains. And uh, Ryan Rye at Velocity was able to get me some main studs, which no one had except him. So big shout out to you, brother. Really, really appreciate that. Um, it's kind of a rundown here though, like what do you plan on doing with the head itself? I hear the name pocket port and stuff and you know, what is your goal? What do you plan on doing with the head itself? Uh, for this head, just starting off uh, with what we can see right now. Uh, so right here in the bucket board, you can see there's a little, little clearances. Uh, it's been clearance here for the cam. Now we're going to come in here on each one of these bores and open this up a little bit to make clearance for the cams on the casting. And then uh, we're gonna replace these steel guides here, some bronze, bronze guides, and uh, we're gonna do a pocket port and a valve job, and then resurface this head. And then once we do all that, it'll be ready to go on the block, so. Now, again, I kind of brought up to you and I've had some differences in opinions on this. Some people say use factory guides, some people say use bronze guides. You know, bronze obviously is the aftermarket version. What is your opinion on this? And again, this is, you know, just on your opinion on using bronze guides. Sure, uh, the bronze guides are way nicer on things. Guys. Yeah, so these, these guides are uh, nicer on the valve itself. So if you get a lot of chatter or anything in the valve, these are gonna kind of almost act like a lubricant. This is where steel is a little bit harder 
a little bit harsher on some stuff. So anytime you upgrade to a higher horsepower engine, you want to run um, some bronze valve guides. Now, is there any differences in durability, longevity? Is there things there that we have to worry about? Uh, I mean, these should be good for the life of the head, really, okay. unless there's some other things occurring inside the engine that are right. causing outside the sources causing a failure for that part sure. to fail. Sure. Perfect. Again, I just wanted some people to hear that. Just uh, get some feedback there. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. BC 276 cams. We are using uh, BC valves. Um, we also have a full dual uh, valve uh, valve train and retainers too. So just, I would say, simple. I guess in a word, yeah. uh, it's that's nothing crazy. Yeah, we're not going to do this crazy port in the head or anything like that. Now, the big thing though, since this is all new, is going over to the block. And I don't have the parts here today, uh, but I kind of want Tom to go over what he sees with the block besides it being horribly dirty, what he saw from just looking at it here real quick. Yeah, overall, uh, the bores look like they're in great condition. Uh, there is some signs in here of some blow by. You can see um, the crosshatch is a little bit worn out. But overall, there's no big scoring or anything in the cylinders, which is great. So we don't have to take a lot out of the cylinder. Um, we won't have to go too much oversized to uh, clean this up and get ready for new rings and pistons. Awesome. And guys, uh, Tom's going to be generous enough to, to take some video too. So looking forward to that. So that's why I said, we don't want to go too crazy today. Uh, we'll kind of go over all the build list once everything is completed. But it looks like everything is okay here and uh, should start soon. Tom, thank you very much, buddy. I'm looking forward to this. All right, guys, so that's going to the shop. Now, you'll notice too, don't have my Jesus beard. You noticed it probably earlier, but I just shaved it off. It was getting irritating and I was getting tired of it. I might grow it out a little bit more, but who knows? So back to this, maybe go back to the old goatee. Uh, it does make me realize, get a little fat going on here, but your boy needs to lose some weight. Uh, that dad bod is definitely starting to happen, so you gotta work on that. But for the engine build, uh, I just wanna thank a lot of people that really helped me out with all this. You know, Tom, obviously, stepping up to take care of this um, makes it easy on me, someone local, to do the head and block, because I know here's the thing I know people are gonna ask. Who's Tom, you know, why, why are you using this random guy? He's not random, right? Uh, I've known Tom for about a year now, and he's just always so well-spoken, and maybe, I don't know how to say it, but he is not like, oh, you have to use this, or if you don't use this part, it's trash. Like, he's just very, like, open, and he gives suggestions. He doesn't force anything. He's just very easy to work with, and it made me feel comfortable. Um, and then when we went there that day, he spent an hour and a half going over every, you know, every area that we're going to go over, like for the head, for the block, explain how it works, you know, the timing. Any question I had, he went through it in detail, and then even brought up other questions for me to think about. So it was, it was just awesome. Um, I feel very comfortable with Tom doing it. Again, 10 years experience, 2Js, VQs, a lot of EJ, um, uh, even the FA stuff now with the Subarus, and if he can work on that stuff, 2Js easy. It's old cast iron block, inline six, it's about as easy as it gets. Subaru stuff's a pain. Uh, I would never want to deal with that, but my heart goes out to those guys. Uh, IAG's shop is absolutely insane. They had some equipment that just kind of blew my mind even. Uh, coming from the CNC world, that shop is nicer than most of the industrial places I used to go to. The amount of money, time that is in that place, it is mind blowing. Hopefully I can go back. Uh, if I get the owner's approval, I'd love to take a video there just to kind of go over the facility because um, it's just insane. Um, I also want to kind of thank some people that also sent some parts to do this. I shouldn't say sent, but you know, help me get through this. Velocity, uh, Ryan Rye, thank you much, man. I appreciate you giving me studs. Uh, Chris Larson and Bender at Nightmare Garage. Those guys always bend over backwards for me. If I give a phone call, if I need help, and just to talk in general, those guys are always fantastic. Uh, Ben's obviously a lot cooler than Chris, but you know, I just give it to Ben for dealing with Chris all day because that's got to suck. <laughs> and um, Robert Delandro over at Real Street. I've known, that's again, Robert Delandro, I've known probably the longest out of everybody. Uh, bought my very first performance part ever for my Supra from Robert. It was an HKS exhaust right when HKS USA that used to be in California was closing up and uh, we were trying to get an HKS carbon exhaust and uh, Robert took care of it, answered all my dumb questions. Again, this was years ago and uh, just generally good dude. So just, it's cool to have all these people involved. Uh, everyone helping and then Jose is going to be doing the harness here. Uh, Nick over at Haltech is always very helpful. Uh, congratulations to you brother on being a dad. I know you're going to do a great job buddy. Uh, I love the post you've been making with your baby girl. You're going to do awesome dude. So for the build, 
let's kind of go over what it is because I, I, I kind of skipped over that. I got a list here, kind of wanted to talk about it here. So for the head, I think I talked about this, but we'll go over the block too, just to kind of give you a rundown. I've got my phone here, so if you see me looking down, we've got the BC 276 cans. We've got BC titanium retainers and dual springs. Um, had to go to dual springs to make sure we don't have any problems here. BC valve capers and locks. Uh, we got standard size exhaust and intake valves from Brian Crower also. Uh, bronze valve guides from BC. There's been some people saying to use them, some people not to use them. So Tom's pretty much saying to use them. I'm definitely still a little weary of using them, but we'll see how this goes. I've seen some people say about failures. He's like, trust me, if we do a lot like this, he's like my personal head. I talked to some other super guys that had Mazworks do some work. They also have bronze guides. So maybe feel a little bit better. Uh, we're going to do ARP CA 625 plus head studs, making sure that thing does not pop off. And we're going to do a basic pocket port clearance for the cans, which he already talked about in the video. And then we're going to sonic clean it uh, just to get everything nice. It is a brand new head, but you know, once you do all that work, you want to make sure all the materials out of it. Now for the block, here's where I haven't really talked in detail yet. So for the block, we are going with JE Ultra Pistons. 86.25 over so not 86 and a half we're going just enough over just to take enough meat off just to get it you know cleaned up so the less meat you take off the stronger the block is and the more room you have if you want to reuse the block again for something else i didn't know that was even possible he told me about it. i'm like yeah let's use that uh nine and a half to one compression so not nine to one not ten to one nine and a half to one compression i know what everyone's going to be like well why not just go to one or the other i kind of wanted to go this route this is what tom talked about too let me run pump gas let me run ed5 10 to one you could still run pump gas too but it's definitely pushing it and at nine and a half to one to feel a little bit more safe with it i'm um, running pump gas as often as i might have to especially something like cruise week um, we're going to use a 250 wall, 0.250 wall wrist pin uh, that goes in for the piston itself. Uh, this keeps it going and I know that's a big boy pin but that's going to make sure I don't have any issues. We're going to be using the Cali Ultra Enforcer I-beam rod, again way overkill, that's a $2,000 rod. It is light for an I-beam too compared to most of the H-beams out there, it's really really light. Uh, don't have to notch a block because it's an I-beam. So it makes life a little bit easier too in that aspect, you know, not take, again, for me, more material takeaway, that's a chance of a failure, right? So I don't want to do that, uh, makes things a little bit better. We're going to use Powerhouse Racing's block offs. So we're going to get rid of the oil squirters, no more oil squirters. We're going to use those block offs for that, uh, bump the uh, oil pressure up some. Going to use a factory oil pump though, because we don't need anything crazy. Um, we already have amazing oil pressure in a 2J. Every other car doesn't have this crazy oil pressure we do. You know, when you turn our cars on, we see 110, 120 PSI absolutely nuts. Um, it's really, really nice for that. We are going with Real Street Billet Mains. We are also going to have ARP 6, 625 main studs, way overkill. I know Pedro with his build is only using the ARP 2000, so to give perspective. And then we're going to use the factory 2JZ crank and then ACL race bearings. Again, that's just to go over some basics. I'm probably missing some stuff too. You know, you have your thrush washers and bearings and all that stuff. Uh, there's little things I'm probably missing here, but that's the gist of it, guys. Um, I, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's going to be not basic. I mean, this is some serious parts, right? I mean, all the coatings too on the piston too. We're coating the skirt and the dome of the piston on top of it to keep everything from hot spotting, to keep everything clean too, from anything sticking to it. Uh, every bearing, every surface we can, we're going to coat in some way, shape, or form. The only thing I'm probably not going to coat is the buckets themselves. I just don't see the need in that. Um, the cast cams are your wear items, so there's no need to coat those. Um, oh shoot, flat tap it. Uh, buckets. So when I shim the head and stuff, I'm just going to shim it. I'm going to use Tony and Gagliotto, Stan Stagger Media. He has his extra buckets. Use those originally put in, shim it off that, figure out what the size is, order me some Toyota buckets, put the shimless in, make sure the tolerances are correct, and let her eat. Um, again, I have a video from five years ago showing you guys how to do it. I'll make another one for this because I think I could have gone better detail and explained things. I have better knowledge now, I have better tools, and I want to show you guys how to do it. Uh, this is something Tom could have done also. I opted to say like, hey man, I really want to handle this. I enjoy it. It's something I like doing. Um, just want to go about it. Another thing people are going to ask you, Ryan, why didn't you fully disassemble the block? Great question. I wanted him to do it. I wanted to see what he thought was he taking, why I was taking apart if he sees something that was off. Uh, fortunately, he did not. Everything looks good. I think he said number six. Uh, bearing was a little worn, but everything else was very mint. He said everything looked good, uh, just oil getting past the rings there, um, which explains a lot why my catch can was filling up so much. So everything looks good. So I've been very fortunate. I'm very happy. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm very pumped. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. 
questions, concerns, anything you have for me, let me know down below. Uh, this is going to be a long project, definitely costing a little bit more than I thought I was going to spend, but hey, we'll make it all work. Again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.